Hey guys, welcome to Ultimate Survival Tips. I'm David. Today we're gonna to discuss everyone's favorite topic, food, and how to get all the food you need in a disaster or survival situation. This is lesson number 12 in the Survival Quick Tips training series. So make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to this channel, and click the bell icon so you don't miss out on any videos in this vital free training series. And to see our new line of four MSK1 knives for this year, Go check out ultimatesurvivaltips.com. All right, let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to this edition of Survival Quick Tips, which is part of the Tiny Survival Guide Learning System and our full Tiny Survival Masterclass online training. In this segment, what David and I will be doing is take a few minutes to break down a vital emergency preparedness or survival topic that is found in the Tiny Survival Guide, which is now Amazon's number one pick for ED survival guides. Along the way, what we'll be doing is share a few action steps that you can put into practice today. All right, everybody. So we're going to be referencing section K, which is survival food and the Tiny Survival Guide as we take you through seven survival food tips to keep you alive in a disaster. Let's get started. Okay, Craig, get us started. Can you take us quickly and relate this topic of food to the priorities of survival using the rule of threes and some reasons food is so important, but maybe not as important as we might think? Yeah, it's real important, David. Thanks for bringing it up. You can't live more than three minutes without blood flow and oxygen flow. You can't live more than three hours without maintaining your core body temperature. You can't live more than three days without water, and you can't live more than three weeks without food. That's how it's easy to get beginners started, and actually not just beginners, but everybody remembering that there are priorities and our needs are not necessarily our wants because as it relates to food, the topic at hand is that we oftentimes want food and we actually don't need it for quite some time. I've been there, done that. I've done survival treks where I have not eaten for over three weeks before. It's very problematic. It can be done. I don't recommend it. But what I am saying is that you can live for quite a long time without eating anything. All right, so now let's get into the seven survival food tips that can keep people alive in a disaster. First one, always carry quick, everyday carry food. Yeah, I'm a big fan of carrying something that's just quick calories. Um, you know, six to 10 high calorie food bars or something of that nature that you carry in your go bag, your EDC bag, whatever it is that you take with you each day. Edible plants. Okay, edible plants is something that takes quite a bit of knowledge and training, so start now on learning how to do that. You can jump into my Foraging for Fun class on Outdoor Core. That's a fantastic resource. Uh, big flan I am a big fan of eating plants because they do not require calories to be able, as many calories as protein does, so it's a good way of getting some food, nutrition in you, and you don't have to burn as many calories getting it digested. And I'm a Big fan of avoiding, that is avoiding, staying away from mushrooms altogether as a survival methodology. Anybody that follows me knows I'm a big fan of mushrooms. I'm always hunting. I picked up another big pile of chicken of the woods this weekend, but I would not do that in a survival situation. Too easy to make mistakes in that sort of mental condition. So as a primer to get you started, in the Tiny Survival Guide, you can see sections M1 through M3. But I would just want to reemphasize what Craig said. Start today. If you're not experienced with wild edibles, uh, start to study those. Be very, very careful and only eat plants that you can 100% safely identify. Next up, Craig, something that we miss a lot is bugs. Bugs are edible as well as most mammals. Uh, yeah, many mammals and bugs are edible. You just want to be able to find the things that you can find readily. It's a lot of work, actually. I had a class two weeks ago, and we spent an hour. We had about 25 armed dudes doing the tactical survival thing, and we spent about an hour trying to find grubs and worms. It was really cold, so it was problematic. And we found very few, uh, and I know where to find them. So it was 
it's not an easy thing to go out and just find a bunch of grubs and worms. And we're one of the few countries in the world that don't regularly eat grubs and worms and stuff of that nature. So if that seems like totally gross to you and you can't overcome it, that's because you've never been hungry, my friend, because I can tell you for certainty that hunger is the best seasoning in the world. And if you're hungry enough, you'll eat just about anything. Okay, Fantastic. let's. why don't you step us through some important food preparation considerations? Yeah, the big thing is to cook and, and or boil any meat that you have access to whenever you possibly can. You don't want to be eating undercooked or raw meat. And insects are always the same way too. Insects, particularly slow-moving insects and grubs and stuff of that nature, uh, they have a better chance of harboring bacteria. Therefore, anytime that you have the ability to boil them, I recommend boiling them as well. And that way, uh, when you boil them, like drop them into water that is coming to a rolling boil. Because the, the goal is to get it past 160 degrees. And if a water has come to a rolling boil, it's way past that. Making sure that you have that visual confirmation with a rolling boil will help make sure that you get the bacteria that might be on some grub or meat or some of that nature and let it cook is going to be very beneficial to you. Okay, next up, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. You need all three. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's one of those things that is good for our health on a daily basis, but at the same time, from a survival perspective too, you can't, you, you see this all the time where guys are going to run off in the woods and live off the land, trap animals and critters and all that stuff. And that person's going to die out there because eating animal protein by itself is a recipe for death because of starvation. So you, you just can't do that. There's been too many horror stories and legitimate historical references, particularly Lewis and Clark and the journals that Meriwether Lewis kept on how his men were starving to death, eating several pounds of meat per day. And so you can't live like that. You've got to have good balance. And one thing back to bugs, many bugs have all three, especially bugs like grubs. Okay. Calories used versus calories gained. Why don't you explain that to people and why that's so important? I keep saying it over and over and over again, but survival is a lazy man's game. So you want to be able to be conscious of what it is that you're doing to gather water even as well as food. If you're going to be burning more calories to go harvest the animal that you're going to be eating, for example, then you're going to be calorie deficient. And so you want to be cognizant of what it is that you're doing. If you're burning a thousand calories out there, for example, to go hunt an animal down, kill it, process it, build a fire, and then eat it, then again, you're calorie deficient. It would have been better for you to just lay there and eat something else. So keep that in mind as you're moving forward in a survival situation. What if you have no food? Do you have any tips that people can employ to survive for many days, possibly even a couple of weeks if they have no food available? Yeah, the big thing here, you all, is to recognize this is doable. You can do it. Lots of people have done it. Some people fast on a regular basis for spiritual or different reasonings. And it's a useful practice for that. It's a useful practice for survival training, too. You just want to do it cautiously and do it uh, slowly. You don't want to go, hey, I'm going to do a 40-day fast all of a sudden. So the big thing in a survival situation is stop whatever it is that you're doing. Don't burn any calories you don't have to. Again, survival is a lazy person's game. So don't, don't do anything more than you have to. And drink as much water as you possibly can. Oftentimes, again, just to reiterate, what you'll hear that is, or what you'll feel that is hunger pains is often dehydration pains more than anything. A lot of times, the first place that people feel hunger pains is in their belly as well as dehydration pains. And so get some water first, and that'll help a lot of those problems. Okay, so here's the way it works, and here's why we have some margin for <coughs> A, at least an extend, extended time beyond uh, some of the other rule of threes items like water to survive for maybe even a couple of weeks without food. And that's because the average person, at least here in America, has a sufficient fat supply. And after a couple of days without food, your body will go into ketosis and you'll start burning that excess fat, which will go to your core and, and at least keep the essentials functioning. Is that right, Craig? Oh, Absolutely. Okay, everyone, we are now out of time for this survival quick tip segment. In a moment, Craig and I are going to continue our conversation with some exclusive content for our Tiny Survival Masterclass students. It's going to include five ways to get survival food from nature when food is scarce.
So if you want access to that vital additional content and you want to take a fast track to plugging your survival, safety, security, and overall emergency preparedness gaps, then get into that course. Get into that additional content. It's fantastic. Use the link below or go over to tinysurvivalmasterclass.com. Don't forget, as always, subscribe wherever you're seeing this or hearing this. Follow us. We really greatly appreciate that. And that way you can get in on the next set of quick tips as they come your way. And again, as always, help a brother out. Hashtag HBO. Share this content with others so you can be a hero. Help somebody. You help them. They help somebody. We've all exponentially increased the skill set of everybody around us, which is a very good thing in uncertain times. I think that's it, everybody. Until next time, keep it simple, be positive, and stay sharp. For your convenience, I've placed links to everything mentioned in the video description. Make sure you smash that like button and click the bell icon to get notified when we post new survival and preparedness content. To support this channel and encourage us to continue to create new videos and sweet, innovative new gear, go check out our new line of MSK1 knives and EDC gear over at ultimatesurvivaltips.com. And last but not least, don't forget to go check out our five-star rated podcast, The Survival Show, on all major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Okay, this is David. I hope to see you on the other side. And remember, be prepared because you never know.